Arcus 328. There is a curiosity at the core of every thinking person, a need for knowledge from uncharted and unknowable territories. But what is discovered in those blank spaces of the abyss, of the cosmos, are things far too immense to understand. Things better left unobserved, lest they undermine our sanity. Better to embrace ignorance than face the truth of our insignificance in the grand scheme of it all. Against the vastness of the infinite, we are mere microbes swirling in an endless, indifferent cosmic stew. I say stew, but the entity is probably more of a blood pudding. Arcus, 7547. Whiskey, deep into the night. A strange aftertaste, a flavor from a world which makes the best whiskey. Whiskey dreams are some of the most pleasurable, dreams of home, with friends and family, enjoying time lost. When my senses returned, I realized I had turned my palace of a prison upside down. I remembered none of it. Everything a drunken blur. So many paintings and statues I had created from memories from other worlds. Shattered. I'm losing my grip on reality, and maybe that's a good thing. One day merges into the next, and I'm lost in a storm of whiskey, screams, and endless streams of broken memories. Arcus, 3212. From a window, I see something moving with an uncanny light. Through the black fog, it shines there, beckoning me. And yet I cannot leave. I cannot move. I can only bring things to me through the Oris. What light is this? Is it a creature sent by the entity? Is it a survivor? Or perhaps it's a marooned soul from back home searching like myself for a way back? An unnatural wind whines and I stare at the moving, hypnotic light. A hideous watching eye, trying to reach out to me. Trying to tell me something. Trying to convey something in its strange, rhythmic movement. Arcus, 345. I have recently wondered if survivors realize the titanic significance of their thoughts and feelings, and of how the entity uses them to furnish the trials. Thoughts and feelings that bring me glimpses of what it's like to have lived on a parallel world as someone else. It helps pass the time. Arcus, 1043. I look and observe the realms of the entity with eyes that see disharmony, chaos, fear, and terror. And yet I acknowledge I may be swayed by appearances, and that there may be another truth beyond the veil, and it feels futile, if not absurd, to try to put to words what I am seeing. Arcus, 767. The Oris was little understood back home, and to be fair, I wasn't given the chance to explain its merits to the Council. Had they taken the time to understand, they would have realized that though I had no verifiable explanation for how the Oris works, I had theories. And the most reasonable was that the Oris works on the basis of the Trinitarian, the Trinitarian of creation, a concept long held by our ancestors and forgotten throughout the ages. But the concept isn't complicated, isn't witchcraft, isn't a secret. It simply suggests that it takes two things to create a third, a father and mother to create a child, an idea and passion to create something new, something real, something lasting and meaningful, a thought and feeling. Therein lies the best theory of the Oris and how it is able to create with auric particles. The failing of other pioneers back home is they believed thought alone was enough, when in reality it is only half the equation. The other half is emotion, for it is feeling and passion that fuels the fires of creation. The Oris amplifies and manifests and forges something new using the mold of thought and the fires of passion. Or, I've been here too long, and I'm grasping at theories to pass the time. Arcus, 293. Things could have been worse. I could have been banished in a dimension without auric fog, containing the memory imprints of countless victims. Memories that keep me entertained and busy with my coin and spirit collections. And the music. The variations from parallel worlds. It helps pass the time. 
in a twisted way, I think what I'm admitting is that I'm glad the entity takes what it wants, when it wants, from the Omniverse. Arcus 632. Through a rift, I believe I culled another memory of Vigo manifesting reality within the entity with something reminiscent of the Oris. How he came to understand the machinations of the fog is both puzzling and inspiring. It suggests to me that perhaps this place enhances one's connections to our infinite selves throughout the Omniverse. King has this way of doing things that are quite amusing. One of my favorite memories I return to time and time again whenever I need a lift is Memory 2332, Gasoline Man. King grabs this man who skipped a few payments on a loan. He drags him by the hair and throws him in an alley. He grabs a metal gasoline container and douses the sod with its contents and lights a match. He stares at him through the flickering flame as the man screams in terror. He watches him beg for his life. Then he flings the match. The man's eyes pop out of his head as the flame hits his chest and falls to the floor with a sizzle. King tells him to make his payment or next time he'll use real gasoline. Brilliant. Arcus, 9082. Max has quite an arm. A farmer made his way out of a barn and with one well-aimed blow with a spade, his head was severed from his shoulders and two spouts of hot blood burst from his body like geysers. He watched the headless man stagger stupidly and collapse in a growing puddle of steaming blood. I have to admit I've gone through this memory more than once. It's one of my favorites. I find Max disturbingly amusing and the illusion of death fascinating. At a distance. 